federal government gradually reopened the border for commercial activities. The Operation Swift Response, OSR, which was launched in August 2019 and coordinated by the Office of the National Security Advisor, has transformed into Nigeria's Joint Border Patrol Team as part of a tripartite operation comprising Bene, Niger and Nigeria. Now, the National Security Advisor, Major General Babagana Munguno, retired in a message to the transformed Operation Swift Response, applauded the unflinching commitment of the security operatives to the one year and four months national assignment and urges them not to rest on their oars, mindless of the outcry of border operators that the closure has no gains. The NSA further added that the joint patrols will be adequately administered and charged the operatives to display a high level of professionalism during the operation with regard to their neighboring counterparts. Now, this was because Nigeria has a widely acclaimed track record of security operations, not just at the ECOWAS level, but the war world at large. Meanwhile, the Police Service Commission has promoted 21 officers who lost their lives during the NSAR's violent protests across the country and another 121 officers injured during the same crisis. The Commission also promoted 23 Deputy Commissioners of Police to Commissioners of Police and 29 Assistant Commissioners of Police to Deputy Commissioners of Police. That's not all. The Police Service Commission rose from its 10th plenary meeting with the promotion of four Assistant Inspectors General of Police and one Commissioner to the substantive rank of Deputy Inspectors General of Police. The new DIGs are expected to represent their geopolitical zones in the police management team. The Commission also promoted 599 superintendents of police to the next rank of Chief Superintendents of Police. The Commission Chairman, Musiliu Smith, presided over the plenary meeting and enjoined the beneficiaries to rededicate themselves to the service of their fatherland. He promised that the Commission will continue to ensure that promotion of deserving police officers will be prompt and driven by merit. It's prime time in Lagos, State of the Nation starts now. You're welcome to the show, I'm Olumide Macaulay. Now, a year and four months into the operation set up by the federal government through the office of the NSA to curb smuggling of illicit drugs and proliferation of small arms and light weapons, used to exacerbate violent extremism and terrorism in some parts of the country, have been significantly curbed. This is in addition to the quantum of seizures of prohibited items and numbers of arrested irregular migrants as the operation progresses. As at the 5th of January 2021, 1,401 irregular migrants had been arrested, while the total seizures were over 159,000 bags of parboiled foreign rice. 10,447 bags of NPK fertilizer used for making explosives, 1,974 vehicles, 895 motorcycles, 16, that is 18,690 jerry cans of vegetable oil, amongst other seized items. The total monetary value of the apprehended items is about 12,538,333,514 naira. The priority remains to keep our borders safe from any inimical activity that will compromise our national interests. Let's now speak with the spokesperson of the operation, Deputy Controller of Customs, Mr. Joseph Atta. Mr. Atta, you're welcome to the State of the Nation. Thank you. Let's begin with the latest. The transformation of Operation Swift response to a new operation. What's the transformation about? To recall that... Uh... Uh, on the 28th August 2019, uh, Nigerian government closed the land borders uh, in the south, south, southwest, north, central, and uh, northwest. Uh, and then it, um, uh, we commenced exercise swift response led by the Nigerian Customs Service, immigration, the armed forces, police, and the operatives of uh, uh, the security services. I mean, the, uh, the, the, the intelligence services, and um, during the period of the during the period of the uh, border closure, uh, there were diplomatic engagements at the political level and at the operational level. Uh, Customs administration of uh, Nigeria, Niger, and Benin Republic had several tripartite uh, meetings, 
Uh, the outcome of this uh, tripartite meeting was that Niger and Benin should also form their own joint uh, 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 border patrol, meaning that their customs, their police, their army, their security forces should come together and form their own. Benin Republic should also form their own. So as we have our own on this side of the border, they should also have their own on their own side of the border. Now, the leaders of this uh, joint border patrol are now to share intelligence with each other, meaning the leader of our patrol in Nigeria and that of Niger will share intelligence, share information and all that, and so also that of uh, uh, Benin Republic. The idea is that what you don't want to come to your side, let me know. My duty is to try as much as possible to ensure that it does not cross over to yours. What I don't want to come to my own side, I'll let you know. It is your own responsibility to, to help ensure that it does not cross over. So this is what was agreed and it is already in operation. And um, uh, since there have been a firm commitment to, to adherence to the ECOWAS protocol on transit and to also address those concerns that necessitated the border closure, uh, government found it not necessary to reopen the borders. Now the borders are open, meaning exercise swift response have achieved its own end. It now transformed to normal, regular joint border uh, patrol, which has also uh, commenced. Uh, hopefully going, going forward, we, we foresee a better secured uh, land borders in the interest of the nation. Would you say the objective set out before the one year, four months closure have been achieved? Exactly, it was, it was made. I'm, I've just told you now that the, 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 the period that the interface, the, the, the discussion, the engagement took place led to identifying what the issues were and our neighbors committing to strict adherence to the, uh, the laws, especially the ECOWAS protocol on transit. Now going forward, they have committed to ensuring that all goods that pass through their country to Nigeria on transit will be escorted in their original form. Unlike before, you know, that was a major issue where goods on transit were being opened and transloaded and you never get to know what is translated or not. And some, some things find their way one way or the other into the, this country. And it made border management very, very uh, difficult for the Nigerian customs. So those diplomatic engagement was able to secure that commitment. And also at the customs level, we also secured uh, this joint border patrol. As I do my own, you also have to do it. And this is how we have to uh, manage our border. So it came out very successful. That's, I'm not even talking about the number of seizures, the number of uh, irregular uh, migrants that were arrested, uh, thousands and thousands of bags of uh, rice that were seized, arms and ammunition, illicit drugs. The one that we can quantify amounted over 12 billion naira. So it was quite a successful operation. And uh, now that the borders have been opened, we have kicked, I mean, entered another phase, which is uh, uh, the joint uh, border patrol. And more importantly, more importantly, this period of coming together of Nigerian security forces afforded us to know certain things that custom alone could not have known, to reach certain places that custom alone could not have reached because pulling us together meant that we have more people more manpower, more equipment and all that. So those intelligence, those revelations are things that are now being addressed. So it was a successful uh, uh, operation. Now, would you say there'll be enough funding for the new joint border operation? But you, if, if the government funded exercise should respond, which is even on a larger scale, why will they not even fund this one? Because some of this is gradually we scale down and the joint border patrols will be there to complement the activities of the Nigerian Customs Service. So it, 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 it's going to be uh, something that can, can, can be done successfully.
Now, just days ago, your service, the customs, posted to have generated about 1.5 trillion naira as revenue in the year 2020. Uh, we were are able to raise over 1.562 trillion naira. Uh, you know, the border closure brought another uh, advantage because the borders were closed. Some of the people who usually uh, pass their goods through Cotonou on transit and they will be, the containers will be broken against uh, extant laws. And sometimes some of them finding their way through the porous border and all that had no option other than to route such goods through the seaport. And passing it through the seaport means revenue will be collected. And that's where of the revenue. Vehicles that would have been smuggled through the porous border had to, be, had to pass through the seaport. It meant also higher revenue. So that added uh, our revenue collection. And uh, of course, strategic deployment, ensuring that extant laws are properly uh, implemented, uh, increasing level of compliance as a result of sensitization, robust stakeholder engagement. We, we must commend more and more uh, stakeholders who are shifting you know, from non-compliance to compliance. We commend them and we urge them to do more. And we ask other people who are still uncompliant to learn and to borrow a list. So we are recording increasing compliance from Nigerians. And of course, that will also... Uh... And in the era of COVID-19 and the closure of land borders on four of six up in Nigeria's geopolitical zones, how are you able to do that? There is nothing new. You know, the exercise street response have been there even before the outbreak of COVID-19. So, and even the exercise street response that is now being rechristened and transforming to, um, to the Joint Border Patrol, eventually there'll be a scaling down. All the preventive uh, measures that they have been uh, uh, practicing, they will continue to practice them. And the service, we continue to provide uh, uh, PPE. Can you fill us in now on the projects for the year 2021? And what are your words to the officers and Nigerians? Well, uh, 2021 promises to be uh, a, very, uh, a, a, a very a very good year. It promises to hold uh, high value for the nation. Uh, the e-custom is coming into being. Uh, you, you recall that in the last two months, the federal government approved the e-customs. So gradually, we will see to the installation of 135 uh, uh, scanners. Uh, already uh, before then, uh, the Ministry of Finance have uh, procured uh, three scanners for us. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria have also expressed uh, uh, commitment to intervene with four uh, new scanners and also to establish a, a, a central monitoring uh, uh, place, you know, for monitoring all the scanning sites. Uh, they are doing this as part of their intervention to boost national economy, especially uh, the agricultural sector. We appreciate the, the intervention of the CBN and uh, we, we, we look very, very hopeful that uh, a combination of this intervention and the deployment of the full deployment of uh, uh, e-customs will place the Nigerian Customs Service in a position to deliver the best practices for Nigerians. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. You're watching State of the Nation. When we come back, it's all about the Police Service Commission and promotions. Please stay with us. Welcome back. We turn our attention to a new discussion. The Police Service Commission recently promoted top officers of the service to new ranks to occupy vacant seats. Now the commission also promoted 599 superintendents of police to the next rank of chief superintendents of police. The commission chairman, Musiliu Smith, presided over the plenary meeting and enjoined the, benef the beneficiaries to live up to their mandate. Let's speak now to a commissioner in that commission, Mr. Austin Brymer. 
Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Now, straight off the bat, who has the promotional responsibility in this exercise? Promotion? Part of the statutory responsibilities of the Police Service Commission is promotion. It is a constitutional responsibility of the Commission to recruit, promote, and discipline the Nigerian police from the rank of constable to DIG. So it's a statutory function of the Commission to promote the police. Can you, give us, can you run us through how the procedure works with the Appraisal and Promotion Committee? Okay, the, it is the responsibility of the police authorities, that is the Office of the Inspector General of Police, to recommend officers that are due for promotion. Because the Inspector General of Police is the head of operation, as, as the key man who, who controls the men on ground, he supervises them, he knows those of them that are competent, because part of the ingredients for promotion are vacancy, competence, and years of service. So the, the only person who can assess policemen in the field is the Inspector General of Police, he is, who is the head of the operations. So he is the one who supervises their appraisal forms and sees them on ground and know those of them who are competent and those who are able to discharge their duties as at when due. They all equally maintain records of service of policemen once we have employed them into the force. So they keep records of policemen, and from time to time they furnish the Police Service Commission with details of their performances, their appraisal forms, and they, they keep their nominal rules, and also avail us the nominal rule to know those who have spent so and so number of years on a particular rank. And the commission now work on the basis of those who are due for promotion, those who do not have uh, pending disciplinary cases against them and those who deserve special promotion by being very gallant or who have performed something, something extraordinary that will warrant encouragement to set as an example for others. So it is the, the responsibility of the police authorities to furnish the commission with details about the performance of police. And the commissioner sits down, look at uh, the statutory provisions to see if the recommendation of the police authorities conforms with what the law says as regards the, the, the period you've served, your competence, whether you've, attend, you've attended the necessary courses, and, then, and, and so on and so forth. Then the commissioner sits down and says, okay, it is right for us to promote this group, or there's vacancy for this group, and we now issue approval for such promotions. So that is the process. How would you take a criticism, or the criticism, or the view that some have that promotion does not come by merit in the Nigeria police. There are even some that go as far as say it's for sale. Is promotion for sale in the Nigeria police force? Do people wield undue influence by who they know to get promoted? Uh, police, you uh, see, anyone can say anything depending on where you are. If, um, if you, like uh, in those days, I'm sure you know how uh, while in school, how children of headmasters are regarded. They, if you are a son of a teacher, if you are taking first in the class, everybody will say, oh, you, take, you are taking first because you are the son of the headmaster or you are the son of a teacher. No one will give you credit for working extra hard or for being brilliant for taking first in the class. So it's often translated to other departments. So in the force, there are people who are brilliantly uh, distinguished themselves in the course of their functions, because of their duties. And such people can easily be spotted by the communities, NGOs, and they, they write commendation letters to the commission. Some are even given awards by media houses for performing brilliantly, doing something exceptional. Such people are given special promotions. And special promotion is not based on your, on your length of service. You, it, it's just that we, as a matter of policy, the commission ensures that you would have spent nothing less than two years in your, in your present rank before you can merit special promotion. And we equally make it clear as a matter of policy that you cannot enjoy special promotion more than once in five years of your, of your being in the force. So when a, a particular police officer has been exceptional and is promoted above his mates, there are bound to be some complaints here and there. And then uh, occasionally you talk about interference. Occasionally you find some officers who have, who have been attached to some political office holders. 
and then uh, the, such a political officer that do exert some or do influence on not not on the commission but on the police authorities because the, pol the police service commission cannot just pick an officer and promote because we cannot the commission cannot recommend and approve so every recommendation for promotion must come from the police uh, from the police authorities so when the recommendation comes from the police authorities the police service commission will look at this dispassionately and decide yes so if there, if there is any if anybody says there is sale of promotion certainly not at the at the level of the police service commission because we cannot on our own recommend somebody and approve the promotion at the same time so if someone is is, uh, is collecting money from somewhere in order to recommend we are not aware of that and we don't believe in it because we always, when even this commission when the recommendations come to us we do enough due diligence to ensure that anybody who is being recommended for promotion is properly scrutinized and he merits it, whether by special promotion or the normal promotion. So these are done. So I don't believe in anybody saying uh, promotions are for sale. Well, you could say whatever you like, but not in the life of this commission. Would anybody say he has paid money to be promoted or, or uh, anybody has collected money to give promotion? The commission cannot do that because we do not recommend and approve. And I don't even think at the level of the police authorities that if they collect money from a person that's not qualified and they recommend it to us, there's no guarantee we are going to approve that. And if we don't approve, uh, then the, the person will have to ask for a refund. So it's, I, think, I don't think it's something that is so easy the way it is being said. But certainly, some of these promotions do uh, enlist reactions from others because when you see your, a, a colleague of yours has performed brilliantly and you feel you are not given the same opportunity to perform or you have not been properly assessed and is uh, giving promotion ahead of you you are bound to feel that the person is privileged or is leaning on one uh, politician or one godfather to get such uh, privilege but certainly in the life of our board very this is very far from the truth we'll be very very dispassionate in the way we scrutinize and uh, give promotions to the police uh, uh, men have you heard of any cases where this happened? Obviously, you have, but if this were to happen, has it come to your attention? And are there any safeguards to check this from happening? I'm not aware of any, and um, I do not think that um, there is any, any such uh, occurrence in the, in the tenure of this our board. You recall that by the, this present board came in on 25th of July, 2018. And immediately we came on board, we actually found a lot of discrepancies. There were, the morale of the policemen then was very low, a lot of complaints here and there that um, their promotions were not done properly or according to law. And uh, the major groups then was that special promotion tool was, was abused as at that time. And um, it was being given arbitrarily. So when we came, we studied the situation and found that yes, some officers had enjoyed special promotion more than twice in five years. And some even enjoyed social promotion three times based on uh, patronage. And we thereon suspended special promotion. So from 2018 till now, we did not uh, use that instrument. No special promotion was done until December last year when this issue of NSAS came up. A lot of policemen got injured, some were killed uh, out of, uh, while on line of duty, and the Inspector General of Police graciously came up with this idea, oh, the morale of the force very low now. It is good that we encourage them. It's good that we give something like a special promotion to encourage those who lost. Some lost their limbs, some were hospitalized, some died. And it's okay, posthumous promotion for about 16, 126 officers who suffered various degrees of injury. We need to give them encouragement. And we, we came together and agreed. So finally, for the reasons of time, sir, finally... Thank you for clearing that yes. up. We appreciate so your, nothing your like candidness. nothing like that has happened. Nothing like right. that has happened in the okay. life of this board. And this is the first time we've done it, and we are not prepared to abuse that instrument of special promotion. Okay, finally, and in just 20 seconds, do you feel it's imperative to address the, traditionally, the traditional centralized model of policing in Nigeria, as well as the need to boost the low workforce capacity and poor funding of the police? I think the, the, the current um, reorganization is going to address all that. 
the reforms going on now, we address the funding, we address the, the, the process of promotion and motivation of the police force. We are aware that their, their salaries is going to be increased. Uh, the, the revenue mobilization is already working on that. Salaries with this commission is already working on that. How to give very good remuneration to the police. We believe that very shortly their salaries will be boosted and their morale will be boosted. We are so sure that the current reforms going on, by the time government fully implement all the reforms, I'm sure that we're going to have a better police this force centrally so or decentralized. Thank you so much. So we'll have to leave it there. Thank you for your time, uh, Commissioner yeah. and the Police Service Commission, Mr. Pleasure. Austin Brimer. And that's our package for today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Olumide Makobo.